Thank you. I'd like to call the Douglas School Committee meeting to, to order on July 21st at 7 o'clock. Can we do a roll call vote of who is in attendance from the school committee, please? Lisa Brown, present. Becky Turnia, present. Monique Salvis, present. Heather Morin, present. We'll give Julie a little bit to come online. If she does, we'll, we'll annotate that for the record. Thank you. Um, so we call to order. We're going to skip Pledge of Allegiance. And do we have a rep student representative tonight, Dr. We do Barrett? Not. We do not. Okay, so I would open it up now for our public comment or communications. Do we have anybody that would like to speak? I don't think anyone is here other than us at this time. So we'll move over to old business. And if anybody comes on, um, I'll ask it before we adjourn for the night. We'll go back for public comment. Um, any old business that we need to discuss? I was wondering um, where does, if um, anybody had any information on where we're at with the electronic signing for the warrants. Sure, so I, I can update you on that. Today, Courtney and I had a meeting with a representative from the DocuSign um, company. They, um, we met with them today and they're sending us a quote for a couple of different options. There are, there are two different packages that we're looking at. Um, there's the 500, on, they call it an envelope package. So you can do 500 envelopes or 1000 envelopes. Basically the way to think of an envelope is one, um, one document and that document can have multiple parts. So what Courtney and her team are gonna be looking at is looking at all the warrants and all the payroll that we have over the course of a year and looking to see if we go with the 500 envelope batch or the 1000 envelope batch. He spent some time talking about um, level of security and um, I was pleased with what I heard. If we go with the 1000 um, envelope batch, it comes with a two level authentication. So you would get an email that says that you have to sign a document. You would open up the document and before you could actually get into the document, you would be sent a code to your cell phone with a unique six digit number that you would then have to add um, before you could open the document. So it's just another layer of security, but that comes standard with the 1000 envelope. Um, we asked them how long would it take from when we said, we're ready to go, we'll send you a PO to when they ordered. They say, we can get you a unique login within one day. And then it's just the training. We would schedule a training to get the people up and running and that could take two to three days. So from when we say go to when we would be up alive and running could be as low as three or four days. So he said he hopes to get us a quote by today or tomorrow, and he's gonna circle back to us on Friday. And then we're just looking to see which one of the two packages we go with the 500 or the 1000. Thank you. Is there anything else that we need to discuss for old business? Moving on to new business. Do we have anything new? Okay, superintendent's report, Dr. All right. Beer. All right, welcome back everyone. Hope everyone's having an enjoyable summer. Really have about four or five things to touch on with everyone today. First is an update on staffing for um, the next school year. So looking at district-wide positions, um, we've hired a director of special education. Tara Soboleski started on July 6th and has been here with us now, I think going on her third week. Um, John Calabrese is our new director of technology. He'll be taking over for Donna Souza. Donna retires the end of the month. And John's been in already, I believe, two or three times to train and transition with Donna. And he starts on Monday, August 2nd. And today we had Raquel Hammond come in and finalize her paperwork. She also has a new food service director um, on Monday, the 26th. We have two additional district-wide positions, team chairs for special education, and we have in the process of finalizing interviews and doing reference checks on some finalists. We hope to have that wrapped up by the end of this week, beginning of next week. In looking at each of the four buildings, the primary school doesn't have any new teachers they need to hire. 
but they're still in the process of looking at ABAs and paras. Usually we do that at the end of July, beginning of August. Um, in the elementary school, we've hired Don Giorsi as our academic center teacher and Cassie Sawyer as our flex center teacher. Um, we have Jocelyn Blessing going out on maternity leave. Mr. Bell has finalized an adjustment counselor to be in for that maternity leave. And he's in the process of looking at ABAs and paras as well. Um, Jack Coyne is our new seventh grade social studies teacher. Jack filled in for um, a long-term maternity leave for us last year in eighth grade. And he's coming on board as our seventh grade social studies teacher. And we're in the process of hiring an adjustment counselor. Mr. O'Brien has been interviewing people for that position. Hopefully we'll have that again wrapped up in the next week or two. And then finally, Brianna Novicki has been hired as our um, special ed education teacher at the high school. And Mr. Romano is finalizing para and ADA positions as well. So that's where we're at in terms of hiring for the 21-22 school year. Hopefully we will not get any surprises between now and the first day of school but I just want to update people on that. Um, prior to the start of the school year, we'll send something out to the community with a brief little bio on each of the, the, camp, the finalists and, and the new people we have hired. Any questions on our hires? Awesome. Um, in terms of what we've been doing since the end of the school year, we've started ESY, um, our extended school year. We have 56 students participating in that. Um, that started right I believe on July 7th, and we have a portion of our population going four weeks and a portion of kids going six weeks. So Tara's been in there, as well as Laura, meeting with teachers, working with teachers and seeing kids. So we have that program up and running. Part of the grant that we got from our ESSA 2 money was to use towards a summer remediation program. That program is gonna be used to mitigate gaps that have occurred as a result of COVID. We send invitations out to people. That program will run for one month and starts on Monday, July 26th. At the primary school, we have 20 students participating. At the elementary school, we have 24 students participating. Um, at the middle school, we have nine students participating. And I was shocked that um, our high school kids in grades nine and 10, we have 24 students participating in our um, program to help mitigate gaps. So really excited to be able to offer that to kids in the community Teachers have been in work and creating the curriculum. So again, it's looking at some of that benchmark assessment data that we took at the end of last year and working on mitigating gaps for kids to get them ready for next school year. Um, our custodians have been busy putting the schools back together, um, inside, outside, waxing floors, moving furniture, everything that they dismantled last year, they are putting back in place for this year. Our secretaries have been busy with, um, again, getting all the forms, getting those back to school packets ready for kids, closing out the FY21 school year and getting the FY22 school year up and running. And principals, again, have been busy with getting class lists together, finalizing schedules, putting together their plans for the school year. So it's been about a month since we've been out, but it's been a busy month with people um, doing something. So that's where we're at with our what's been going on since we got out on June 18th. Um, two other quick things that are on the agenda and I'll open it up to questions. One thing that's come up is a couple of people have asked the question looking for this meeting in terms of where it was posted. Um, do apologize that we didn't have an FY22 link on the school committee um, webpage. I talked to our tech people and that's been added. So if you click on school committee, click on meeting agendas and um, documents, and click on FY22, everything should be posted in those calendars and those folders prior to the meeting. Um, the other thing that's come up, I've received a few emails from families is guidance about masks and what the rules and the norms are going to be once the school year starts. On June 19th, Commissioner Riley released the following statement. At this time, all health and safety guidance, including masks and physical distancing will be lifted. So as of June 19th, we're going back to normal. That was the guidance that was released on the 19th. So all health and safety guidance, including masking and physical distancing will be lifted. We had a meeting with him last week and he said he's still meeting with DPH, still meeting with his medical professional team, and he's gonna issue final guidance the end of this month 
beginning of next month as to what September will look like. Um, we haven't heard anything other than that. And that was as of last week. But as of right now, July 21st at 7.09, the guidance is still what we heard on June 19th is that all health and safety guidance, including masking and physical distancing will be lifted. So just wanna update everyone on that in case people had questions um, on what September is gonna look like. Hopefully we'll get that information more towards the end of July and not the beginning of August if there are any substantive changes that will allow us the opportunity to plan in August. Um, that's all I have. I'd be more than happy to answer questions if people on the committee have them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Dr. Vieira, I wanted to ask you if um, you had received a letter from the Massachusetts Action Coalition. I have received that letter, yes. If you are aware of that. So, um, we got to read that letter as well, and um, it was great to read that. And I'm, I'm wondering if you would be okay if we read it here? Absolutely fine. Awesome, awesome, okay. Um, so this was sent to the Douglas School Committee um, to Lisa Brown as the um, former chair. Um, dear Ms. Brown, on behalf of the Massachusetts Action Coalition, we wanna recognize and commend Dr. Paul Vieira for his outstanding work to support our recent National Libraries of Medicine, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Innovation Anti-Vaping Grant. In 2019, the MAAC received this two-year grant to create a statewide evidence-based, adaptable, developmentally appropriate curriculum on the impact of vaping on student health and wellness for grades six through 12. To achieve the goals of the grant, the Action Coalition developed a working partnership with the Massachusetts Association of Superintendents, who selected Dr. Vieira to serve as co-chair of the grant curriculum committee. Dr. Vieira was solely responsible for identifying a curriculum expert to support the work of the committee that was comprised of faculty, school nurses, and school counselors from across the state. Dr. Vieira provided ongoing meeting support and expertise for the completion of the adaptable comprehensive curriculum guide. Most recently, this work was recognized at the national level by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation as a valuable contribution to the public health crisis of vaping. We are sincerely grateful for Dr. Vieira's efforts and hope that the town of Douglas recognizes the outstanding education leader that they have in Dr. Vieira. It is a very difficult year. He provided, in a very difficult year, he provided inspiration and support for us to effectively complete our work. Please contact us if you have any questions or need any additional information. Sincerely, Patricia Crombie, RNMSN, Mass Action Coalition Project Director, Co-Chair Anti-Vaping Grant Advisory Committee and Maureen Sorzinski, RN DPMP, DMP Co-Chair Anti-Vaping Grant Curriculum Committee, Nurse Consultant Center to Champion Nursing in America at AARP. So congratulations, that's a very nice, and we commend you on the work Thank that you, you appreciate did that. with that organization. So wonderful. Yeah. It was a great project to be to be a part of. We we sent it out. All, all the superintendents received a copy. They sent it out to their staff. I sent it out to PE and health teachers here in Douglas. One of them reached out and said, "If I only had this three days early, I just finished my anti vaping unit." So we were really excited about that. Um, uh, myself and Dr. Baeda from Norton, who's on one of the other boards with us, we're going to be presenting at the. Um, um, New England Superintendents Conference to New England Superintendents that curriculum. We're also presenting at the Superintendents and School Committee Conference in November, um, the work that we did. So hopefully it's not just going to be isolated to the 15, 20 districts that um, were part of it. We hope to get it out and the message across the state so people could take this evidence-based um, curriculum and implement it in, inside their classroom. So we're really excited about the work that we did. And I'm honored and humbled that you that you read it so thank you very much great very important work thank you congratulations thank you congratulations 
seeing now that the superintendent's report is really complete, <laughs> we're going to move on to the school committee uh, and subcommittee uh, reports. Okay, it's a doozy of a list tonight. So I find warrant three of school year 22 dated 7-15-21, which was three batches totaling $62,162.84. Warrant 51, school year 21, dated 6 17 21, which was five batches totaling $53,091.60. Warrant 51, school lunch year 21, dated 6 18 21, which was one batch totaling $4,523.07. Warrant 52, school year 21, which was dated 6 24 21, which was nine batches totaling $294,690.66. Warrant 51 school lunch year 21, dated 6-25-21, which was two batches, totaling $19,298.26. Warrant 53 school year 21, dated 6-29-21, which was seven batches, totaling $131,770.39. Warrant 53 school lunch year 21, dated 629.21, which was one batch, totaling $11.86. Warrant 54, school year 21, dated 630.21, which was six batches, totaling $12,649.78. Warrant 54, school lunch year 21, dated 630.21, which was one batch, totaling $1,494.15. And warrant 55, school year 21, dated 6 30 21, which was four batches totaling $100,700.77. Nothing unusual. Thanks, Becky. If anybody needs tutoring on how to read numbers, <laughs> you did a stellar job. Okay, so now we're on to the consent agenda where we're going to go through and um, look through the June 16th, 2021 meeting minutes. And I'll be looking for someone to make a motion. Make a motion to approve the June 16th, 2021 meeting minutes, school committee meeting minutes. Motion and by Lisa, and I need a second, please. Second. Monique makes the second. All those in favor, roll call vote. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Monique Salvas, aye. Heather Moore, aye. Thank you. And now we're going to move on to the June 29th, uh, 2021 meeting minutes. Are you looking for a motion? Make a motion to approve the school committee meeting minutes of June 29th, 2021. Motion made by Lisa, second by? Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Monique. I'd be looking for a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charney, aye. Monique Salvis, aye. Heather Moore, and aye. Thank you. Now we're looking to look at the FY22 Witten Community Center Agreement. Courtney, do you want to explain this to us? <clears throat> yes, um, yes, this is the same the agreement um, we bring um, every year. I do typically do it before the end of the fiscal year, um, but we didn't get to it. Um, White and Community Center has been providing um, before and after school program for students of Douglas residents um, for a number of years. Their program is conveniently located in the primary school. They utilize two classrooms with adjoining bathrooms and have use of the gym several times per week. They also utilize a playground, um, which is located directly outside their area. So we try to keep all the students, the children can contain in one area. Um, we, rec we do recommend maintaining the same fee of $6,500. Um, I think given everything last year and, and you know, um, uh, you know, we'll be reviewing it at the end of this coming year again. Um, White and Community Center provides a program that is beneficial for parents and students. It is conveniently located within our schools, which provides for ease of transition for the students, inconvenience for parents to pick up their children at the end of the day, 
and the Whiten Community Center staff and primary school staff do consistently work collaboratively throughout the school year and they do assist with homework and provide other curricular um, activities. Um, the revenue from this program um, does go in a revolving fund and it is, uh, can be spent only on um, facilities needs um, for the primary school. And um, I have not changed anything in the language. So I did check with them to see if they needed any changes in space. But I think again, because of the whole COVID year, you know, there are no changes <laughs> really. So, um, so I did not change anything except for the fiscal year. So beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022. And if the school committee is in agreement, I did provide um, um, motion language as well. Does anyone have any questions? Courtney, can you provide the motion information for us, please? The verbiage? Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, move to approve the Whiten Community Center license fee of $6,500 for the 2021-2022 school year for use of the Douglas Primary School for before and after school care program. So moved. Looking for a second. Second. Monique made the sec. Oh, it was Becky. Becky made the second. Looking for a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Turniak, aye. Monique Salvas, aye. Heather Moore, and I. Thank you, Courtney. Okay, you're welcome. Um, the next one is the FY22 positions contract. Mm -hmm. And again, this is what I, I usually do bring it before the end of the, the fiscal year. Um, and I realized we hadn't done this in the White and Community one. So Mass General Law Chapter 71, Section 53 does require the school committee to appoint a school physician for the school year. And Dr. Sirocco has served as a district school physician for a number of years. I did check with her to see, um, I don't wanna assume no interest, no um, increase in the fee, uh, but she did say, you know, that the current fee, and it's been the same for years, um, is, is fine. So the fee would be $3,500 for the upcoming fiscal year, the same as it has been for some time. And um, basically what they do, the services that they provide and that are in the um, contract is they consult um, on development of policies. Sometimes we'll seek um, information from them or the nurse will regarding pertinent health and safety of the school, emergency care plan, first aid program, bee sting protocol, give AIDS protocols, environmental safety, athletic safety, um, or um, protocols for using AEDs. And they do collect, she does collaborate with the school nurses, um, school administrators and other pertinent school personnel as needed, as well as the Department of Public Health as needed to develop and implement a program of immunization against communicable diseases and control of other infectious illnesses, um, IG bloodborne path, um, bloodborne illnesses and, and other things. Um, consultation regarding medication administration. I know that's, that's a big one with regard to the nurses, including non-prescription medications. And they do review and approve um, standing medical orders for emergency medications. They oversee the purchase of supplies that requires a medical doctor's license um, in order to procure those supplies. And again, consults with school nurses on an as needed basis throughout the school year and school administrators as well. So that's what they do and that's basically um, you know, a lot of this required by Mass General Law. So again, the uh, fee um, would be the same $3,500. And I did provide a motion language. I can certainly read it if, um, if, if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay, but does anybody have any questions first? I'm just curious, um, was she utilized much this past year? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that. That okay. would be the nurses. Oh, yeah. oh, the nurses. That's a good <laughs> question. I could find out and uh, let you know. Seems like a good year to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that that's that that is that's true. And un unfortunately, I apologize. I don't know the answer to that question because I don't work directly with her. That's I, know, I know a lot of our support, Mrs. Sharnia, came from um, the Board of Health when we when we did reach yeah. out for advice and suggestions when it came to COVID. Came from the the Board of Health. Mm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the motion that I have is um, move to approve Dr. Elizabeth T. Siraco as the school physician for FY 2022, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 71, Section 53. So moved. 
Motion made by Lisa. And we'll be looking for a second, please. Thank you. Second. Second by Monique. Roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Monique Salvis, aye. Heather Warren, aye. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, the FY 21 to 22, I mean, school year, sorry, school choice of 2021 to 2022, vote by grade. Sure. So back in the spring, people remember that the school committee voted to allow school choice. So one thing the principals ha have done is they look to see how many kids they have going into the current grade. They allowed for some growth within the town. They allowed for some move-ins to give us some flexibility. And they looked to see how many openings they would have available for school choice students coming in at the beginning of the school year. So we're gonna need the school committee to vote so that we can send the letters out to families um, letting them know. So in, I'll just go through this with you. In kindergarten, we're looking at being able to add four to five students in grade one between 10 to 12. Our second grade is completely full. Um, so again, we're not accepting any school choice in grade two. This will give us the ability in case we have move-ins or um, some growth. Grade three, five students. Grade four, 16 students. Grade five, zero students. Grade seven, 11 students. Grade eight, 17 students. And then in our high school, grades nine, 10, 11, and 12, 30 students per grade level. Um, so for a total of 194, possible school choice students. Um, just as people may remember, once we've accepted a student in school choice, they stay with us as long as they wanna stay. So if we have a kid who enters in as grade one from Webster for school choice, they can stay with us through 12th grade. So we'd be looking for a motion to um, approve the recommendations of the Douglas Public Schools building administrators for each grade level for the school choice cap for the 2021-2022 school year. I have some a couple questions. Correct. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <done> that first. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, um, so in terms of um, class size this year, um, you know, I know it varies probably by school, but um, or by grade. But um, can you provide any sort of like uh, feedback on that or? I have it buried in my notes somewhere. I know when I did um, a presentation when we were going back to school for um, coming out of COVID, going back full time, we were looking at class sizes. Our class sizes, again, if you're just painting everything with a, with a broad brush, are somewhere in the high teens, low twenties across mm -hmm. the board. Uh, when you get to the high school, they're a little bit smaller, but if you look at that, probably high teens to low twenties, um, that's where I could provide more detailed and get it from the principals if, if you'd like, but th that's that's where we're at. Obviously in the classes in grade two and in grade five, um, we're, we're at capacity. Okay, so, um, you know, with school choice, we're not seeing classes, you know, we're seeing classes remain like under 25 students, like for sure? I can't say for sure, but I can find out if needed. Okay. Um, I, I, I know that when we were looking at, at, at the elementary school, for instance, when we were putting kids back in, in rooms, um, we were able to get about 25, 26, 27 desks in there. So, um, and, and it was pretty tight. So I think that's where Mr. Bell in grade two and, and in grade five capped it. So um, I know okay. the elementary about 25, 26 is where we're at close to capacity. Um, I can't speak for, for the other buildings. I know with the middle school, being inside some of those classrooms, I think 25 desks would, would be tight in some of those classrooms. And at the high school, I can't say for certain. You know how it compares to last year's school choice numbers? So the so these are just, these numbers in the spaces are pretty consistent with where we were last year. As far as how many kids are gonna actually sign up, we still don't have that. We've been, ex we've been receiving applications for school choice. Now we need to see how many um, spots we can open. Up. And again, people need to reapply every year. So just because we're getting the applications doesn't mean they're all new applicants. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 
So I'll be looking for a motion to approve the 2021 to 2021, 2022 school choice um, by grade um, for the school year. School choice cap. So moved. Motion being by Lisa. I'll be looking for a second. Second. Second by Becky. Roll call vote. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Monique Selvis, aye. Heather Morin, aye. I do just have one question before you move on from this one. We did discuss this before about having an, an end date, like October-ish, oh, where yeah. we closed it. So we're going to stick with that kind of a... Sure, I'll let, the, I'll let them know. Yep. I don't remember what the date was that we ever decided on, but it was so they wouldn't keep trying to come in in Correct. November, December, unless it now, was- Should, that, should that be incorporated in the vote? It was you an think? estimated basis. Sorry. Um, I think we did it when we closed. Okay. After the beginning of the school year, I think. So I'll, I'll add it, I'll do another, I'll, I'll make a note to add this to our September agenda, and then we can make a motion to end school choice and pick a date, all right. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And the next one is to affirm the Douglas Middle School and Douglas High School Student Activity Fund account. The Douglas, um, is that the Douglas Elementary School? Oh, yeah, that was just a note, but I'll incorporate that information in my, in my thing. I probably shouldn't have put that on the agenda. So. <laughs> I think I thought of that after, not really agenda material. But um, yeah, so um, for Mass General Law Chapter 71, Section 47, which governs student activity funds, along with the procedures and audit guidelines, um, is promulgated by um, DESC. The student activity accounts must be established by vote of the school committee. That's when we actually first established them. And it was also the auditor's recommendation that we reaffirm the existing student activity funds, fund accounts each year as well. Um, so I did provide an Excel spreadsheet as I do um, each year that has, um, well, elementary school, middle school and high school. So with the elementary school, we did close it out as of June 30th because for several years they had absolutely no activity whatsoever. So the remaining funds that they had, I believe it was around, if I remember correctly, around $135. Um, I did seek and I got it in writing from the auditors just to make sure because they always like to do that. Um, that um, what they could use the funds for, and we did use it for a year of one, a year end um, student activity. So for the end of the year, which was very nice. Um, so they made sure they closed it out right to the penny. We've reconciled it with um, the town accountant and, and, and did everything that we needed to do with regard to that. Um, the middle school, I have listed out all of the accounts um, as well as the high school, and it goes on to a second page as well. Now the auditors during the audit did ask about a few of the ones um, for middle school and high school that didn't have activity when they did the audit for the end of FY20, which was of course the beginning of COVID. And then we had FY21, which was COVID. So I did um, check with both of the principals for each school and I did email the auditors back and they were fine. But basically I wanted to give, um, particularly with a new principal coming in at the middle school level, and with everything happening with COVID, give both of the principals for those two schools the opportunity to look at those few accounts that maybe haven't had activity and maybe see if they want to resurrect it. And then what we'll do is we'll review them um, throughout this year. And if there is no activity in some, we will close it out before June 30th of 2022. So just to let you know that. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to let you know is, um, I think we've mentioned it probably quite a while back, that there are some proposed other student activities that uh, may be brought to you sometime during this year. I think approximately five of them that have, have come up and we just haven't gotten through with the process. And as you know, we're currently in negotiations right now, but just to let you know, there may be a few more added. And those of course have to be brought to the school committee to be approved. Um, so does anyone have any questions with regard to the listing or process or anything? So hopefully they can resurrect some of the ones that haven't had activity for the last last couple of years. And I did, um, I can read the, the language for the, um, the motion. I have it's it, Courtney. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I move to affirm the student activity accounts for the Douglas Middle School and Douglas High School student activity funds per the attached fiscal year 2022 student activity accounts listing. The elementary school student activity fund closed as of June 30th, 2021. Looking for a motion? What's the motion? Oh, it looking for a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> motion made by Becky, second by Monique. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Brown, aye. Becky Turniak, aye. Monique Selvitz, aye. Heather Moore, and aye. That concludes the consent agenda. We move now down to the school business and operations managers report. Courtney. Okay, so first we'll do, I did, um, and I apologize for some of the lateness of these, but we're closing out the year and we're trying to clean up as much as we can in this meeting um, before we go forward and I do the giant moving things around um, to literally close out the books. Um, so I have um, for you this evening, reclassifications numbers one, two, three, and four. Um, so reclassification number one is um, to utilize the balance left in the rural aid grant. Um, so we're moving expenditures from the general fund into the rural aid grant to completely expend that grant. Does anyone have any questions on that? Reclassification number one. And we can do these one at a time like we typically do. Oops. We have to do a, a, a motion to approve it. Oh, does anyone have any questions first? I think I forgot if I asked you if you had any questions. I'm I don't sorry. Think anybody okay. Does. okay. <laughs> I move to approve the Douglas Public Schools FY 2021 year end reclassification number one for the school committee meeting July 21st, 2021. Motion made by Becky. I'm looking for a second, please. Second. Lisa Brown second. made a second. Roll call vote. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Heather. Monique Calvitz, aye. Heather Moore and I. All set? We're all set. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I have FY 2021 year end reclassification number two, and this is moving um, small salary amount from general fund into the FY 21 Title I um, grant to utilize that small remaining amount that was in, left in that grant. Very small amount. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> you have to have a, a, under a dollar in order to close out. So even if it's a dollar 10, you know, <laughs> it has to be uh, taken care of. So, or you have to send it back and they do not want it back. <laughs> so hey, those, those title one ladies are worth every penny. So mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Any questions on this one? Make a motion that we approve the FY21 year and resident classification number two. Uh, made to the school committee dated July 21st, 2021. So moved. Second. So moved by Becky, second by Lisa Brown. I'd be looking for a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Monique Salvas, aye. Heather Moore, and aye. Okay, thank you. Um, we have FY 2021 year end reclassifications number three. And this was, um, the first one was, well, they actually they were both charged. Um, one was charged to the primary school that actually should have been the elementary school for custodial supplies. And the next one down um, was charged to school committee dues and memberships and it should have been superintendent. MESS versus MESC. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're just um, reclassing those. Any, Any questions? Qu Sorry. No, no. Um, I make a motion that we approve the FY 2021 year end reclassification number three for the school committee meeting dated July 21st, 2021. So moved. Second. So moved by Becky, second by Lisa Brown. I look even for a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. 
Monique Salvas, aye. Heather Moore, aye. And the last one, I promise, is um, FY 2021 year end reclassifications number four, well, for tonight, um, number four. <laughs> and this is um, the amount that we had left in the uh, FY 21 ESSER one grant um, was 209,915. And we actually had it right down to the dollar, but then it was a timing issue with the Chromebooks. So you can't do anything other than the FY 21, the 22 ESCO and 22. So, so we had to find other expenditures in the general fund to move into that grant um, in, that, in those same categories to utilize the grant as of June 30th. Any questions? Make a motion that we approve the FY21 year and reclassification number four presented to the school committee on July 21st, 2021. So moved. Second. Moved by Lisa Brown, second by Beck, I mean uh, Monique. I believe we can for a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Traniak, aye. Monique Salvas, aye. Heather Moore, and aye. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, the only other thing that I have, or maybe a couple of things. Um, so we're working on closing the year and I will keep you updated um, with regard to timing in August because each year it depends on the timing. But right now we are shooting for that, the date that you already have scheduled for a meeting. That's what we're shooting for. So um, that should be fine. And I do want to say I'm looking, looking forward to having um, a new food service director start on Monday. Um, everything is really looking well, and um, we're also closing in on filling, well, filling one of our two custodial positions, and that has been very difficult, but we're, we did finalize one today, just need to do the paperwork, and for the one that we have for the primary school, um, the split between the primary school and the middle school, we hope to have an interview on Tuesday, so we'll be keeping our fingers crossed, because trying to find custodians has been a, a statewide, maybe a nationwide, I don't know, issue, like a lot of things um, because of COVID and other things. So um, keep our fingers crossed and um, we should be in very, very good stead district-wide as far mm -hmm. as filling um, a number of positions. So we're very happy about that. Any other questions for, for Courtney? Hey, thank you so much, Courtney. Hey, thank you. Um, uh -oh. Do we have I'm any- frozen, or everyone else is frozen. I'm not frozen. Well, I'm not frozen. <laughs> Your money. Well, it depends on you. <laughs> um, we're gonna be doing the upcoming school committee. Um, meeting is August 18th, correct? Correct. Yes, okay. I will not be there that that evening. I can tell you that right now. Um, so um, just to let you know, um, do we need to do an executive session? We will know more in a week and a half if we will need an executive. Tonight, we do not need one. We may need one on the 18th. Okay. And the August 18th will be held via Zoom or in person? It's up to you, whatever, whatever you would like. We had discussed Zoom mm -hmm. previously. Um, I, don't I know, know we had it scheduled for Zoom, but if, if we need to do it in person, we can do that. I will not be there for August 18th. So um, Zoom it should be, but um, so I would say we keep it as Zoom on August 18th. And then we'll be back in person on September 1st. And barring any change in the guidance, I think we'll go back to where you've previously held the school committee meetings in C208. Yes. So, um, if there's nothing else, I would be looking for a motion for it to a for us to adjourn for this evening. I think Becky had something. Oh, Becky, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at my calendar and I am also away on the 18th. Um, so I could, I am willing to try to do the, cause I know I would be running it if Heather's not there. Um, I'm willing to try to do zoom, but I don't know how good my signal is going to be from there. So I'm wondering if we would be better off to reschedule. I'll 
I can go the, the eight. I can do the day before if that's easier for people, but the 18th is a no go for me. Are there any issues with changing the day that you typically have it or not? I'm not sure about that. No, I, no, no, we've we've rescheduled in the past. Okay, all right. Because I would rather do that rather than try to do earlier because I know we won't have the books closed. And right. I think, you know, if we try to do way too late, it's getting way too close to the beginning of the school year. And um, will yeah, the, so that, that may will work the 17th out well. work for everyone? I can't make the 17th either. But again, I, I will try. I would try if it's on Zoom. I would definitely try to do it remotely. I just I mm -hmm. don't want to. I don't want to say yes. And then if there's only three of us there in my internet spotty, then we don't have a quorum. So, um, yeah, I'm out on the seven. I'm I'm a maybe on the seventeenth too, depending on my signal. Okay. Sorry. I could do the sixteenth. I could do the twenty third. I could do the weekend. <laughs> the twenty third might be late, Courtney. Correct. Or oh, the nineteenth, maybe, or the Thursday. No. No. Okay. I can do the nineteenth. I, I just the eighteenth is a is a no go. I'm I'm. I've got a family yeah. commitment, so for me, it's a family commitment. Yeah. Well, if, 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 if Monique if and family. Heather and Lisa can do it on the 19th, and I will try, you'll already have a quorum, and I will try, and we can find out from Julie. So if we can schedule it for the, ni the 19th instead. That's fine. So what's easier, what's easier for the committee, the 17th, that Tuesday, or the 19th, the Thursday? I'm good with either. So whatever's yeah. the majority. What works? What works? Yeah, I'm fine either way. Either way. Mm -hmm. You pick, Heather. <laughs> Let's go with the 19th. Courtney, you'll get an extra day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need it. Actually, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I'm Heather. Like, no, no, no. I just, it, it, no, I, I get it. Family, I have a family commitment on the 18th, and I, I just can't. Um, no, so, I get it. So and I think I, that. That works. And what we'll do is we'll put we'll put in. I'll ask Donna to put an alert. Um, or at that point, yeah, it'll be gone, um, on the mm -hmm. website that just says mm -hmm. school committee. You know, please no change in date from August mm -hmm. 18th to 19th. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I was going to recommend that. So thank you for the discussions. So. You're welcome. Yep. Okay. Is there anything oh. else? That we didn't anticipate to come on is the is the if anyone out in the public would like to speak we'll open the floor i think it's just us again i think we're still alone yeah. okay just in case <laughs> mm. so with that um i wish everybody a, a happy well, we have one per we have one person who just came in Is it Scott? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Do they I don't see any. I don't see anybody, Doctor Vieira. Yeah, there is. Uh, there's Vera. someone. No, oh, she's there. Yeah, she's just trying to connect. I'll turn it back over to you, Heather. Is there anyone that would like to open the floor for public comment? Or you can type it in if you have a question that you'd like or want to do some commentary for the school committee? Yeah, we can use the chat as long as when we read it, we provide your name and address. Um, but if you're just logging on now, we're about to wrap up. So I think this is your, this is your time if you have a question or a comment. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late, no worries. I just wanted to join. So I um, don't have a specific comment, but thank you. Thank you for joining us. 
I will just throw out there since um, we have a, a person coming, a person here for the last few minutes that, um, you know, I, I personally just appreciate, you know, the communication from parents and members of the community, members of the district. Um, you know, it's important for us to hear where everybody is coming from. So we appreciate it. And we're glad that you're showing up and, you know, whether you want to be here on person or shoot us an email or, um, you know, put a thing in the chat, it's important for us to, you know, hear from people. So thank you. Yeah, no worries. I thought the uh, thunderstorms was going to cancel something I had before, but it <laughs> held off. So then I was late for this. I apologize. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> yes, and I echo Becky's sentiments as well. We always welcome, you know, the community's involvement because we obviously as school committee members work for, on behalf of you. So thank you. Thank you. So seeing that we have nothing else discussed, I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn for the evening at uh, 751 on July 21st. So moved. Motion made, I mean, I'm so moved by Lisa, second by. Second. Becky Turniak, I'd be looking for a roll call vote. You can tell it's been a long day, right? Yes. <laughs> Brown eye. Becky Turniak, aye. Monique Salvis, I. Have them more in I. Have a wonderful summer, everybody. See you in a few weeks. Bye bye, everyone. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.